All right, so Cyberpunk 2077 has finally gotten a brand new update for the first time in several months, that being patch 1.63. And while it's not exactly the largest update we've ever gotten, and it doesn't include any of the overhauls that we've been waiting for that will most likely be dropping at the same time as Phantom Liberty or sometime shortly beforehand, it does include some major fixes and changes that we've been waiting for for quite some time. And while I won't be going through each and every one of the bug fixes in this video, as they're mostly general bug fixes that fix specific issues that most people probably won't run into, there are a number of things that I do want to run through as they are pretty noteworthy. The first of which is actually a fix for the UI as they have finally fixed an issue where the FSR toggle wasn't grayed out after restarting the game with dynamic resolution scaling on. This could cause some issues, so this has thankfully been resolved. As for some visual fixes that they've made, they fixed an issue where some surfaces had color artifacts when path tracing was enabled, and they've also fixed an issue where bright, colorful flashes appeared at the edge of certain objects when DLSS was enabled. Two issues that really only apply to people with NVIDIA GPUs, but that does apply to me, so I'm pretty happy about it. As for some very PC-specific improvements, they fix a crash that occurred on launch when using Razer Chroma. Being said, I don't really suggest using that software to begin with, as it does seem to regularly have issues with games and software. Now, they also fixed an issue where photo mode screenshots could appear as empty files and also brought them back to their original folder location. So for any of those photo mode lovers, especially those with all the photo mode mods installed, this has thankfully been fixed. Now, something very exciting for those fortunate enough to have a RTX 4000 series GPU is that they have improved performance of DLSS frame generation on AMD CPUs. So if you happen to have a RTX 4000 series and a Ryzen CPU, for example, then you should see a decent performance improvement with this update. Now, as for some console specific changes, they've actually kind of decreased the number of available save slots on Xbox to 20 for manual saves and 10 for point of no return saves. And unfortunately, if you do have saves that exceed this limit, you will have to delete some before being able to create any new saves. It's a very unfortunate change, but it's likely a file size restriction on Xbox's end, so not sure they had much of an option here. That being said, I don't think a lot of people are hoarding their saves to that extent, and if you are, there's probably a lot of saves that you don't care about at this point anyways. Now, they also addressed an issue affecting performance on Xbox Series X and S after playing for an extended period of time. My assumption is that this was probably a memory leak issue, so it's a really good thing to see this resolved. That being said, I would still suggest you get up and move every once in a while. As for the miscellaneous changes, They've also fixed another issue related to photo mode, so stickers and frames will now properly appear on screenshots. Now, what I would say is probably the most exciting update for those immersion lovers out there, including myself, is that Padre will now actually recognize Corpo and Nomad V in the intro holocall. So he'll no longer be having a moment of dementia and ruining the continuity of the different life paths. And I do have to say, I am really glad they made this change, even though it's such a small detail. Now, they did also make some improvements to Red Mod with this update, as they have now allowed deploying mods from a listing file and have also updated command help text. For those of you that are wondering, what does allowing deploying mods from a listing file mean? Well, according to the folks over in the Cyberpunk modding Discord, this is what they had to say. Red Mod deploys a list of mods in order, passed through the command line. This was problematic with long load orders or many mods. This change now makes it so you don't have to pass the names in the command line, but read it from a file. I also added that we can specify load order of archives in another load order file. So really they're just ironing out one of the flaws that Redmod had once you started installing more and more mods. I do really hope that we still get to see some upgrades to Redmod with the release of Phantom Liberty, but we'll have to wait and see on that one. Now, speaking of mods, please keep in mind that a lot of mods will be broken by this update, as they are with every patch. But thankfully, things are being updated very quickly, as Cyber Engine tweaks, Red 4 Extender, Archive XL, Tweak XL, Codeware, and many more have already been updated for patch 1.63. So if you've already updated or plan on updating the game, just be sure to update all necessary mods, as your game will not function otherwise. And hey, if you don't want to deal with Steam's forced updates moving forward, then you can always use my affiliate link down in the description to pick up Cyberpunk 2077 or any other game over on GOG. And while that's pretty much it for patch 1.63, a lot of information has dropped on Phantom Liberty over the last week. So if you haven't watched it yet, you can find my video where I covered the initial details on screen, but I'll be having plenty more videos dropping over the coming days for Phantom Liberty, all the information that we've gotten, and I am still working on the Phantom Liberty official trailer analysis and breakdown. 
But hey, that's it for this video. Thanks as always for watching. And until next time, this is Foxy signing off.